My name is Max Musau. Uh, I'm a technologist at uh, USIU Africa, which is the United States International University. Uh, I'm a technologist in the School of Science and Technology. Um, I'm one of the managers of the computing labs in the university, and I also work on uh, individual projects with uh, students, staff, and faculty inside the school. So that's a little bit about uh, USIU Africa, which is in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, that's kind of the most iconic building we have, which is the library, uh, followed by the student hostels and the Chandaya School of Business. Um, yes. So um, what we did was we organized a series of boot camps uh, at the university. Uh, which was aimed at um, demystifying and teaching kids between the ages of 12 and 19 aspects about um, computer technology and computer science. Uh, the sessions that we taught were based around web design, app development, computer programming, uh, digital marketing, and blogging. Um, the workshop uh, curriculum was designed uh, by uh, Google. I don't know if anyone else has heard of the CS First, uh, CS First content uh, that's done by Google that covers um, a lot of the content which includes uh, app development, web development, um, uh, content. So, um, how the university supported is by allowing them to use the kind of the labs that we have on campus, which uh, we have about four labs that have uh, almost um, 90 workstations, which are broken down into uh, lab one to four. Um, yes. So the idea of the camp was to invite kids from all over uh, the, all over Nairobi to come to campus to learn about uh, computer science. And what we managed was, with the content from Google, was we managed to cover about 30 hours of computer science uh, content through live talks, video, and lectures, and practical uh, sessions. Um, 75 participants created almost 84 applications uh, of different complexity using Scratch, uh, Python, and uh, uh, Intel's XDK platform. We empowered about 40% uh, 40% 40, uh, 40 of the participants were female, uh, which is a significant uh, uh, gender-based shift uh, uh, when you look at the perceptions of STEM in Kenya, of STEM subjects in Kenya, which is mostly seen as something just for boys. Um, we managed to inspire uh, through technology, uh, two technology sessions, um, these kids um, um, well, through the sessions we had, we had different sessions that had um, that had career panels that would discuss how to get into tech. Um, um, yes, sorry. So all these sessions were kind of brought together so that these students can can be motivated to move into into STEM uh, subjects. We evangelized and brought awareness and the growing importance of getting computer skills uh, among young people. And through the media that we have in Nairobi, uh, we managed to uh, generate about 1.5 million Kenya shillings uh, worth of uh, media generation from this event. So that was good. Here's a few images of, of some of the sessions we had. Um, a lot through the CS First content done by Google, we were able to the kids were able to listen and learn and go through uh, the exercises given by uh, the platform. Um, most of them were it's built on on Scratch on doing exercises on Scratch, um, so the kids really enjoyed. And in the last session, we had uh, a hands-on session where we had uh, Raspberry Pis, and the kids were putting together sensors and were able to sense. Uh, in this case, it was uh, soil humidity that the student is working on. So that's the, uh, that was at the end of the camp. It's a little pixelated, but um, at the end of the camp, uh, uh, a lot of kids enjoyed and 
I think they're really excited about how to how to come back to the to to the university and participate again in this way. So, uh, how does the digital literacy program uh, join into the innovation camps that that we worked on? Uh, the government of Kenya is running a digital literacy program where they're expected to roll out about uh, into about 20,951 primary schools, a total of 1.2 million uh, learning devices by the end of December 2016. Uh, to date, uh, the rollout is in progress and there are about nine, uh, 992,000 uh, devices manufactured, about 855 devices shipped, 1,000 devices shipped into the country, and about 700,000 devi devices installed in about 14,000 schools and over nine, uh, 95,000 teachers have been trained based on uh, digital uh, literacy. This is data as of 3rd third, uh, third May. So the goal of the di digital literacy program is to give learners uh, devices that they can um, kind of enter into the digital age uh, and use uh, applications like Word, PowerPoint, uh, simple digital tools uh, for the mod modern era. Uh, and based on what we had done, oh, there's, there's, there's an image of kind of the devices we're talking about. They're giving out uh, laptops in each of, um, uh, in the 2,300,000 uh, high schools. Um, that's our president down there uh, in the class and some of the government officials there. So the last slide is kind of blank because um, <laughs> at this point we're trying to see how to merge the two. How do we now get computer science into public schools? Uh, because now they do have the ability, they've been given these laptops um, uh, to move them into the digital era. The next step now is to figure out how do we um, use the, the devices they have, uh, use the format that we have using the innovation camps to get this uh, computer science uh, lit, uh, computer science content to them so they can start building applications um, uh, to solve problems that they have in, in their area. And uh, yep, that's my talk. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's someone who wants to make a question. Max, Max. No? You are very clear too. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. I think that right with the next one will be Alan, and he, he, will, he will talk us about Moon Heart. So, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Et bienvenue à Bordeaux, en France. <laughs> Uh, do we have any French speakers here? Est-ce que nous avons des francophones dans la salle? Okay. Have we any English speakers here? Okay. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, but, uh, les francophones, vous parlez un peu de, fran uh, un peu d'anglais quand même pour, pour me suivre. Et de toute façon, il y aura le, également le, à l'écran uh, le, le texte en anglais. Donc c'est un peu. Je suis sous-titré. Donc uh, je m'excuse d'avance. Je parle en anglais, <laughs> mais uh, voilà, si vous avez des questions après. So I, I, I was just explaining that um, with the subtitles, French speakers can help as well. It can help as well to to um, to understand having the subtitles underneath, and it's kind of part of what I'm the subject that I'm going to talk about. So my name's Alan. I'm Irish and I'm French, uh, and I am uh, one of the the volunteers uh, for Code Club in France. I help uh, coordinate in the south of France. And I am going to present a project which has come out of Australia. So as you can see, well, with all the conference, it's, uh, it's very international. Um, so uh, I'm just going to say a few quick words. And if you come away from this couple of minute talk, I'll try and help us get to lunch fairly quickly, so I'll, I'll go very fast. Uh, if you come away from this with one thing, remember moonhack.com. So if you didn't pick up on the answers, if you want more information, go to moonhack.com. You'll have all the information. I have flyers as well. And if you have further questions, there's also a load of Code Club people upstairs. You'll see the banners. Uh, don't hesitate to ask them. So uh, I'm just going to put this down a second. Does anyone know what this is called in French? 
the English people, English speakers, you know this is called scratch? What, what's that called in English? What, where does the name Velcro come from? Does anyone know the story? No. So it comes from Switzerland. Uh, the person who invented it in Switzerland noticed he was walking his dog and that he noticed the, the grass was getting stuck on the dog's leg and there were hooks and there were um, and it was kind of like velvet. The, the dog's hair was like velvet and the, there were hooks kind of like barbs on the grass. So uh, he invented something to help stick stuff together and in English we use the French term. In English we use velcro which comes from Velvet, velour, uh, crochet, velvet, hook. Okay, so I'm, I'm teaching what it's. I'll come back to this point in a second, but it's just to, to give a little thing to bring away. So, and in, so in English we use the French term, and most French people don't know that it's called velcro. And in French we use an English term, scratch, which if you say that's called scratch to an English speaker, they go, no, it's velcro. So it's just to point out that. Uh, Sometimes things get lost in translation, and one of the things, one of the great things about Scratch and Logo before that, um, is the fact that it crosses all sorts of boundaries, cultural, social, but equally linguistic language barriers. So it's a big advantage with, with Scratch, obviously being able to go into the website or to the download version and to switch between the languages. So as I said, it's a, this Moon Hack is a, a big international thing which began in Australia. Last year, they decided to mark um, So this is on National Australian News, the morning show. Am I speaking, am I speaking loud enough? I probably I, I forgot to take the microphone back. Um, so, a lot of people don't know um, when the first steps were made on the moon uh, on the 16th of July, 67, was it? Someone's 69. In any case, the 16th of July. Those images that everyone knows of the first steps of Neil Armstrong were beamed via Australia, the Australian outbreak, and came through a, a radio station, a base station. And those were the, the images that went around the world. So last year, to get a theme that, uh, to get kids coding, because that's the, the hashtag for Moonhack, get kids coding, uh, they decided to do an event, a one-day event, which could be spread out depending on people's availability, to get as many kids coding as possible. And they did it around a space theme, a lunar theme, uh, a moon theme, and they made available some resources um, on, on, for Scratch. And they ended up with 10,000 young people coding on the same theme, Kelly. If you go upstairs, Kelly is, our, is the head of Code Club Australia. So you can talk to Kelly about it. And they managed to get 10,000 young people coding. This year, they have a bigger goal. It's to get 100,000 young people coding around the world. And there's already several countries that are signed up. So I'll show you the website very quickly, and then I'll pass on. Um, let's see. OK. So as I said earlier, if you come away with one thing to find out more about what's happening here, up, get in here, up, let's go here, up. Yeah, so this is the website. If you want to get involved in this, okay, lunch in five minutes, okay. I make time go backwards, no. So yeah, all the information is here. The goal this year is a particularly difficult date for France. It's, um, it's the 15th of August, because everyone is on holidays, and it's a, it's a public holiday here. You can, even in France, we can do it throughout the month of August. You have this website, you can go to it, you have uh, sign up here, and throughout the month uh, of August, you'll be able to encourage young people to, to do the, the projects. You have lots of information um, up above here uh, to, to help explain how you could organize an event around it. And then you have the projects in here, which are being translated already into several languages, as you can see. 
and the projects, the, the basic projects for it, are already um, in Scratch Junior, Scratch, and Python. So uh, I'll invite you all to, to take a look at the take a look at the website and think about if it might be good for you. And even if you can't organise something, talk about it around you. Parents could do it with their kids. People are on the beach on holidays. All you need all you need is to be able to access the website to, to get to the resources. Um, so even on a tablet or a smartphone, uh, it could it could be possible. So uh, and don't hesitate to ask us for more information. I'll be around, and any of the people with uh, any of the people with Code Club T-shirts uh, or branding, uh, don't hesitate to ask them. And most of all, uh, enjoy your stay in Bordeaux, enjoy the conference, and uh, happy to meet you all and to get to talk to you some more. Thank you very much. So, so Francesco, actually, it was sort of on the same theme. Um, does anyone have the title in front of them of the next one? It's International Mars Mission. International Mars Mission. So I can just briefly resume. <laughs> no, I can. I can basically say what what's in there, uh, what what I know about it. So Fran Francesco, who's again, I'm saying about the international. I'm, I talk. I talk way too much. T tell me to shut up. Uh, so Francesco Mondada, Mondada who's from uh, EPFL, which is the, the an institute in Lausanne, uh, an, an informatics and computer science um, institute. They're behind uh, the the creation of a small robot, educational robot, called Timio. Uh, I don't know if some people heard of Timio. Uh, yeah. So again. Yeah. You can look it up, or you'll find some of the people, and Francisco will be around. I hope he'll be able to present it in a bit more detail. Uh, these are small robots, very simple to, to program, and kind of autonomous as well. So even very small children can simply, on pressing buttons, make it move around and interact with one another because there's sensors and, and captures. Uh, and they also then have the possibility to use a, a scratch-like programming language. So there, there's a, a block system which can be used to, to program this robot and the interactions between them. And among the various projects that they've done around that it's really taking off, particularly in France. It's very, very well known in the educational system over here. One of the the things that they've they've organised, um, I I think I'm on the same lines as what he <laughs> what he was going to speak about right now, uh, was um, R2 R2 T2, which is obviously a play on words with R R2 R2 D2, and um, so the T is for Timio. and so it's um, it's a way of coding as though you had a mission, you were separated from. Uh, a distant planet, obviously Mars in that case, um, and between different international teams, they've already done this on various different levels, between different international teams, they get people to communicate and to coordinate, so there's a lot of teamwork, again it comes back into all of the stuff that we're, all that we love so much about Scratch and this, this, this world of collaboration and, and involvement and interaction with people, um, so it's a good way to get people equally from different language uh, backgrounds to interact on this common theme, so they'll have some They'll come across some problems, and they'll have to sort that out. So I'm, that's as much as I know about it. I hope I haven't uh, missed <laughs> the point. Francesco, uh, if you see him around, he'll be able to tell you lots more about it. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope I've done justice to uh, I've done justice to to their project. But if not, look look it up. Look up Timio online and R2T2, and I think maybe in the in the Hoova app. Um, and that goes for all the all the different um, events and talks in the Hoover app. There's a lot of um, links and maybe documents and so on as well. So uh, yeah. that's that's if from you the. And maybe if we can, we'll see how the timing works for the rest of the week. We can maybe try and f slot in that he'd give the talk, the proper talk, at some point, and we can communicate it on, on Hoover. I'll, I'll coordinate that with him to make sure that the information goes out that we'll say International Mars Mission is happening now in such and such a room. Okay. Is he on hmm? Are they actually doing it right now? Okay, even, even better. So, ah, <laughs> he's just arrived. <laughs> I've, been, I've been filling in for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you want to give us a couple words, okay. yeah. Sure. Well, I, sure. yeah, I, I've sure. spoken for about five minutes about about R two T two. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> so, so at least people will get to see who you are and they'll be able to come to talk to you about because we're because lunch is now. So yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Uh, I'm trying to. Okay, uh, so 
three words, I will try to be extremely short. Uh, so, uh, my goal was to, to present to the, the space mission. Uh, I'm from the UFL in Switzerland. Uh, we are a professor in robotics. And uh, uh, the idea of the space mission is to bring together, I will tell me, go on. It's to bring together children that are everywhere in the world that connect together on a, on, a, on a space mission. Instead of showing you the slide, I will just cut directly and show you a short video that shows you a, it's, it's just a, a small uh, report of one of the missions so that it gives you a little bit an idea of how we do we do this. Uh, in, that, in, in that mission, uh, the programming was done using another environment than Scratch, but now we adapted Scratch and tomorrow afternoon, or tomorrow during lunch, you will be able to see a, a demo of a uh, mission uh, using, uh, using Scratch. So Imagine it's 2032. Humans have managed to put up a base station on Mars, but a meteorite has damaged an important power generator. 16 robots have to assess the damage and restart it. So the idea is really to have a rescue mission on Mars, okay? And the people that have to rescue are a team uh, made of... Uh, ...by the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, the EPFL, where a room has been turned into the Mars Space Station Mission Control Center. So this R2-T2, is... as this simulated rescue action is known, is an initiative to promote robot programming skills and a general understanding of technology. We're following the simulation from the International School of Geneva, Ecolint, where the preliminary tests were also conducted. So this is seen from, from, uh, from Geneva, and the idea is uh, Geneva was one of the 16 teams that was, that was participating. The other team were in uh, uh, Russia, South Africa, France, uh, Switzerland, uh, Austria, and Italy. Okay, and they were all together one afternoon working on the, on the, on the mission. Other teams in six different countries. So these are the Mars station teams. is divided into four sectors, each with four robots working together. The Ecolint team is in sector C and is controlling the green robot. The young space engineers get debriefed before the mission can take off. Here are the images of the station. All right, but a sector so is a of the the block. Team. You have to get out of the way. These are the spots you have to find, and then you've got to park your TV out so in the front of one of these the squares. The to, to go you have to divide the up the tasks. Open the door, and so go and not everybody's going to be programming, but you can. Everybody can contribute to the programming. The Timio is an affordable educational robot with lots of sensors that can be programmed to react to its environment. And uh, it can understand things like if something's in the way or uh, if something's not in the way. So if there's nothing in front of it, like if he's follow, if he just sees a wall and he, he won't go forward, but if there's a doorway, he will go for it. So you can program him to do things like that. Delays in communication due to the distance make direct remote control of the robots impossible. So the programming team has to plan every move before commands are sent on to the rovers on Mars. The programming is done through a simple graphic interface. So, just, just to understand, you send the program to the... To the, to the to the space station where the robot are, and then you get back a video feedback with a delay of 30 seconds, which means that you cannot control it remotely, and when you send it go, then you have to wait 30 seconds until you see the robot moving, and when you say stop, it will take 30 seconds of what was programmed to before stop. So if you do something wrong, then you will see this only after 30 seconds, and then you will see you will assist to 30 seconds of damages before you get it to stop. And that's great for, for children because they are really facing the consequences of what they are doing and they are really to think about and plan directly and be extremely metab uh, met methodological in, 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 in what they do. That generates the code in text form. This allows the kids to learn techniques that enable them to modify or program advanced commands. 
The programmers are helped by the communication department, which reports back to Mission Control and other teams in the same sector. I was the commu communication director. I was uh, communicating with all the other teams on the chat where we were deciding what positions we were and what the, strat what the strategy was and encouraging each other. Everybody's connected. Okay. Awesome. Everyone? Tell them uh, we're about to connect. Oh, to our magic the mission begins. Red moves in front of the gate. Blue, with some difficulty, manages to open the gate. Yellow and green reach the entry path. Even though the green team is last, they still manage to offer some useful advice to the blue team. Tell them, like, to put a match speed on. So they're really helping each other, so they have to be really good. Like they have to learn each other to do the end of the mission. There's really no competition, it's really collaboration, and they have to work together. Blue and red manage to get into the power station, while green is forced to resort to extreme measures. Push them! Push them! We're pushing them! They want us to push the yellows! Push the yellows! The program is first rehearsed on the test chart, before being sent out to the robots on Mars. A glitch in the programming puts the rover off course. Eventually, all rovers manage to find their positions inside the power station. But for the mission to be completed, they still need to approach the four gates around the generator. And yeah, the approach yeah. needs some careful calculations. That's, yeah, that's 50. Yeah, that's 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. No! Unfortunately, the Green Rover hasn't made it to the space station's gate. Back to the drawing board, where the move is reprogrammed and tested. Finally, the Rover makes it to the dock. The infrared sensor is also activated on all Rovers, initiating the right response. And then at the end, we have just all, all, the, ro all the rovers need to, to display when the, the internal part of the generator is passing by. And then there's a nice uh, light show at the end, and uh, everybody's happy because we, we accomplished the mission. And so we have seen the students are really training a lot of skills, so programming, cooperating, uh, discussing with the others, uh, being methodological in the way you, you act. And so that's a little bit an idea of. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, going through the YouTube server. That's it. We we can we can uh, we can add uh, additional delays, but these are the minimal delays by. Uh, encoding, sending to the YouTube server, and then getting back the the, the, the stream. Yeah. So uh, not really. So they are all distance. No, we, we don't have any. So the the, the, the closest <laughs> student is uh, 10 kilometers away. So we don't have we don't have physical meetings, which is, by the way, one one missing element. But uh, uh, the the video feedback uh, there are several, and one is the main one. And on the main one, we can have a speaker speaking. Okay. So we have uh, we have used. Uh, uh, Claude Nicolier, who is our Swiss astronaut, has he's, he's been uh, uh, three times in space. He he did an announcement for us, saying, "Hey guys, we have a problem on Mars. You have to say." And the kids who know very well in Switzerland, they know very well uh, Claude Nicolier. Ah, oh, he's asking us, and 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 that's 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 helping a lot. Um, the one of the the, the person, the person who is coordinating now all the mission, uh, is a Russian girl that uh, is a space engineer and was working on the. Uh, International Space Station. So uh, we have people that are within, uh, that are that are connected to the to the to the space uh, industry, and uh, uh, one of the sponsors is the Swiss Space Center, uh, and uh, and is supporting us with, with in this type of activity. Yeah. 
looks very really great, but I have one thing that you can get how is the coordination between how does it do every team control how do, do they coordinate teams around the world or do they just solve the same problem? No, they have to coordinate because, in fact, so there are four robots for each, there are four sectors. In each sector, there is the same mission. So they have to coordinate four by four. Okay? And then they have to come to the end all together because the final show is all together. So they have to wait the other team and, or help the other team to go to the. So uh, they collaborate. They, they, on the, um, uh, you have uh, one main video stream, and then you have four streams, one for each uh, section. And then within the video stream, there is a chat on YouTube. When you have a live stream, you can chat, and the, the, the team are chatting on the video stream to coordinate themselves. I'm going there, eh, the yellow, can, can you push me? I, can, I, have to go, I want to go there, can, I, can, I, can, you, can you move? When, do, when are you planning to move in half an hour? So all the mission is taking three hours and a half, more or less. Okay? Yeah. So until now, we, uh, we, we had uh, t t t two R2T2 where Africa was involved. So simply, uh, Africa was one of the team. Okay. So uh, on one sector, you could have uh, one African team. Uh, so it was uh, South Africa, South Africa, Russia, Austria, and Italy. And then the next was France. Uh, I don't know what, etc. So we were we were spreading. We the, the the team over all the, the the robots, and then we were trying to try to mix the nationalities. So if we have four teams from Switzerland, we will try to put them one in each sector so that they meet other groups of other children that are on the other world. What we missed until now is that um, the children then they want to really know who is the other one. Okay, and what we saw is that we we, we did this with. Uh, we try to do uh, this with the same fuseau um, horaire. I don't know how you call it in English. Time zone, because we want, yeah, <laughs> we, we we don't want to work with children during night. Okay, so uh, we did one in uh, South Africa, Europe, Russia, and then we did uh, one also with uh, Mexico, Canada, and uh, Caraïbes, and. Uh, the children in Caribe said, "We want. We now we we will travel and we will go and meet the others." Okay. So it was really, uh, and then was really spontaneous from the from the children. We want to meet the other. We, we we were together on the on this mission and we want to meet them. They are not. They are. Well, we want to travel to Canada. We want to learn the language. That was a was a poor English uh, teacher that got. Uh, so the children came to to her and said, we have all those terms that we want to get <laughs> in English. So all the technical uh, terms, so how to move a, rob, move a, move a motor, and, uh, uh, read the sensor, etc., etc. And that was spontaneous. So it, was, it's, well, it's, it seems to be a, a very uh, energizing activity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francis. A good lunch. Ich